kick off then. I'll make a start. I'm going to welcome you all to um, today's Transport Committee. And obviously the first item is the usual apologies for that. Apologies. Yes, Chair, we've had some councillors, Bradshaw, Carr, Flatley, McKinney, Rowland and Williams. Any further apologies other than those names of course? I think otherwise we've got everyone. Okay. Second item is just the usual reminder of any declarations of interest. If there's anything now or any part of during the debate, I'm going to spread the Gary? Thank you, Chair. I'd like to declare personal interest in item 7, uh, as I do some work with the company who provides cycling solutions. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much. No further ones? Yeah. Lovely. Okay, third item is the minutes of the last meeting, uh, which was held on the 27th of July. Uh, so can I move those as a correct record or everything happens back then? And the first uh, large item is item four, which is the quarter one corporate plan performance and financial monitoring report. Stephen's going to give us a presentation for this. So Stephen, over to you. Benchmark is what 
we're trying to achieve. We don't have complete control over some of these costs, but we can influence them. And you can see that with under that, you've also got commercial bus tunnels average uh, costs are also below what we would expect that we're aiming for. So that's what we're getting out of green colour. We've still got things like ferries, commuter extension are quite expensive. There's those reasons behind these. But we're thinking that the way that we've shown it graphically shows a better way of comparison to show that sometimes we shouldn't always beat ourselves up about certain things being more expensive. When you look at it in context, they're not that, they're all round about what we would expect if that's something that's probably cheaper uh, than we would expect or that people would expect things to actually be. Look at our second one, KPI Street Patronage. Uh, I mean, as I say, you could look at the first sheet and see everything's green. If that's all you need, great. I'm just not going to do it quite well. It can go on your way. You may want to dive a little bit deeper. So here, we're going to take the Patronage. Again, it's the same thing as you used to get previously, but in a more visual way. Uh, because we want to be more open to not only people who understand the work in these areas, but people who have more of a passive interest and just want to get a general view of how well this is travel. So what we're doing on this, and you'll see it build up over the next quarters, is each quarter we'll fill in where the numbers are going, so you'll start to see trends. So I suppose that's one thing from the Q1 report, is someone you only see one line, so we just start it. So what we've done is we've equated it back to our end in quarter four last year, so you can see the progress that we made. This one has raised a few eyebrows, including me all, but we're also trying to look at different ways of presenting things. Not so it's the same thing all the time, but also I don't want to present things just in a different way, just for the sake of doing it. But what we've done with these is, if you look at the top one, push commercial reliability, we've got a benchmark of 99.5%. So that kind of dial on the clock shows where we need to be targeting. Each circle represents a quarter, so again, only the middle circle has been filled to show where we're up to a quarter bomb. So if we just look at that first uh, circle, you've got your benchmark, as I said, 99.5, so you start at 12 o'clock. You obviously want your figures to go around and hit that benchmark. You can see it's just slightly off, 97%. It's now the other 2%, but you can see how it will build up. What you will hope to see is that in Q2, that circle will go further around to kind of almost a, a bit like a strike um, and show that we're actually achieving our target. And that's the way we're doing it for each one. You can see you've got Mersey Rail on green, you've got the benchmark there around about 94%, and obviously past that, 97%. Obviously, it would fill up to completely three once you got 100%, so which ideal, but may not actually be practical in reality. So, in terms of the circles, they'll build up for each circle, so you can see how we're improving quarter on quarter. I think when I first saw them, it was a little bit too spiry for my liking, especially when the second one did the same thing. But I think that idea of kind of the benchmark, you can see how you achieve it, works for us. Uh, but also, I welcome your feedback to say well, that is something that might be a bit too complex or not cheap. As I say, we're always using the same data collection processes. We have our certain models, data flows, and governance about how we actually do this. This is just how we're trying to represent it. So we can do a number of different things depending on what the audience uh, requirement is and where we are. Again, more detail on the safety. Again, all, all the KPIs are going in good directions. None of them are going down. They're all green, green amber. This is a little bit more detail on where some of those issues with safety are perhaps coming up. So you can drill down a bit deeper and start to ask the heads of service that you meet questions about well, what is it at that point. I saw in the report that something went up or down there. What was it? Can you explain why that one was? So whatever it was that made the performance targets get better, can we repeat that and use that as best practice somewhere else? If something's gone down, obviously you can look at what that was and then we can uh, amend it. Some things are just blips, things like the ferries would be to do with weather conditions, etc. So there's always many reasons why this is. This is just that kind of top level Again, customer comments about comments resolved in 21 days. We've got that for all different services in Mersey Travel, so you can highlight, look at exactly, you know, we perhaps need more support. So you can look at, say, IT, 100%, fantastic. Well, you can see three comments. We can go over to bus, 91%, against 158 comments, so you can see uh, the difficulties that different sections may have when they're trying to deal with the work that they're getting. Connectivity, I always mention this because it's one of those really important ones, and that's a huge project, but we've kind of represented this graphically uh, as well. We do kind of internal connectivity as well as ex uh, external. External is all about links to the rest of the country. In turn, is one of our, how we change our uh, 
uh, bus service and whether it's easy for people to get travel around uh, the, the district um, easily. Doesn't change much, as I say, unless something big has happened. We've had the bus reviews which has come into this uh, quarter performance, but again, it's still up it's still hitting a target where you know we've got good connectivity within the region and out of the region. There'll be more detail on this through the PMO office that we have the report on specific projects as you get from your heads of service when you need to. Apologies for the smallest on the screen, um, but in the printout book you should be able to see that, or when you get the full report on the project, you get the detail. But as you say, for our PMO office, who use a certain system of rating uh, called SPI and CPI, and we've picked out eight of the biggest projects that Mercy Travel is currently delivering and show you the status against each those uh, and the progress on them. So as you can see, you've got Monk uh, University of North as well. Set a project for all this dog smart ticketing, rail station devolution, bus delivery model, Mersey Ferries program, total system refreshing, Kingsway rewire. You may get some information on this from Gary's report later on, but you can also receive updates and books specifically on these projects. Again, we're just trying to show a, a top level um, performance so that you can then query the detail later on, but again, all the projects as reviewed by the PMO are on track and nothing to get particularly concerned about at this stage against q that we keep up that was the case. So I'll say the second part of the performance report looks a bit more subjective, play the numbers, we collect those numbers separately and report on them so that we can uh, kind of manipulate them in any way, we compile them, we check them, we validate them, and they are what they are. Obviously sometimes numbers can tell a certain truth, I'm not talking fake news, but you know, they can interpret them in different ways. So our second part is where we look at the priorities, which are the activities that most travel said it will undertake in that year in its budget that hopefully will make those KPIs go in the correct direction. So overall, we have five priorities for this year. That consists when we split it up across the plans for each service area into 242 service level activities which we track every single month and get updates on and we do rag indicators on each of those as well. So that's the overall summary for all of them. And you can see we've got 81% green, we've got 1.7% on the red, which we'll come on to uh, later. Um, but I'd also say sometimes the greens are the ones you need to look at a little bit more than the reds. Um, so each one of these, we've split it down uh, so you can see how each priority is built up. So priority one is built up of five different strategic activities. Within that, all the teams across Mercy Travel <coughs> undertake various projects and programs which we also track, which are appearing in the green block. So you can see that if you're looking at 1B, there's quite there's 30 different activities that contribute to that. 1B is also just one of five that contribute to that priority. So you can see how it kind of builds up. If you ever wanted to have any information on each one of those bits, we do have that. But you can imagine if we tried to present that to this meeting, it would just be here all day. Um, and indeed, everybody in the room is going to give you some answers. But again, KPIs are on track, so are the priorities. Priority two, again, we've got eight to seven and a half percent of all the activities are on track. Nothing particularly coming up as a, uh, an issue. A couple of amber greens in there, but again, Q1, plenty of time to rectify anything that's not going quite right there. In the tables that you've got as well, you also see just explain what the priority is and what the activity is. As I say, in the background, we churn all the feedback from heads of service and every quarter that build up. So the reports also in detail get sent to directors who then make those comments, make those ends, and we can give to the committee this. Um, priority four, again, that's got a, um, a couple of threads in there, but you get those details in the report and also that will allow you to question the lead um, head of service on those projects if you have particular interest in what's going on there. So, priority five. So, as you can see, we presented it uh, slightly differently. It's the same information. But you get it in a more graphical form, and I hope that that just makes it a little bit easier for you to perhaps focus in the short time that we do have here um, to, to answer the questions that you want to answer, or at least to then go and pick up that information with the direct and the service that you engage with along the way. At that point, I'm not going through all the details of why this is, because in a lot of cases I don't have that information about it, but I'll hand over to the tree and might have a few points you might want to make on the reports so about the data team. Uh, then John might make some comments on the finance and then it's open to questions and we'll answer those as best we can. Uh, well, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, 
and just a couple of things, and you'll notice because we're in Q1, we're working on the strategic activities will change over the time. So the activities that are in Q1 will be taking themselves. So you'll see that in priority one as well, especially on the strategic activity one B. Um, and then the other thing to note, uh, on page 32, you can see the Kingway, Kingsway tunnels uh, being put through, but uh, we're sending through the updated files to the library. Some of these performance indicators, 
I, I might have made one on page 17, KP14. It's on functionality of commercial buses, usually challenging road conditions. Now, I know about Edge Lane, that's been dug up. We've got just the top of the road there by Old Dale Street, uh, top of the Gordy. Uh, that's the same. Just recently, it's been published that uh, councils have got to have more powers on uh, keeping contractors uh, to time on doing some of these works. There's another one up at the top of the Garvey by Old Elstree, Great Howard Street. That's been about two or three months. Nothing seems to be happening. Ed's Lane. You've got Ed's Lane where the new shopping complex is, the new B&Q. <coughs> that, nothing happens. You go there weekends, there's not a soul on site. You know, and we are suffering the consequence of this. Uh, you know, I, I know Mick is hopefully trying to get a grip of some of these things with the highway side of it, but I think we need to be more sort of forceful uh, with some of these contractors and laying down a schedule and then publishing that schedule so as we all know what the delays will be and how long they'll take. Because then we, as Mercy Tower, are suffering some of those consequences and of course the people we serve are suffering with all these delays. Becky, you best place to take a response to that. I think officers are certainly agree with council and compassion that this legislation has been long overdue. Yeah. I think every district suffers these problems and has been for many a year. Uh, hopefully as well through the KI group, we can uh, bring, bring pressure to bear on the statutory undertakers to, to make things even better, especially once the legislation is in. I think most members will be aware that now, uh, I think nearly every authority has a permitting scheme that allows us to put the pressure on. Uh, but it is this missing piece of legislation that yeah. we need. It's basically, you know, if we want them off, we can get them off. Got Tom, then Jed, then John. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks for the report. Um, just a couple of questions. I think I'm picking up on the same uh, point as the previous speaker about uh, punctuality on page 17. And again, obviously, we're all aware of the issues on Edge Lane and Hanover Street. But um, I recently got in touch with the comment system uh, about the reliability of the 82 service. And in the response I got, the um, person who wrote back to me acknowledged that there were issues, that there were reliability issues. So I wonder if the issues might be a little bit more widely uh, spread than just onto these isolated events. And furthermore, recently, you'd probably be aware that the uh, operators have changed the route of the 82, uh, missing out uh, Hanover Street on the way into town, going straight down um, St. James Street. Um, I just want a bit of information about how that decision was reached, uh, why the, the route was rerouted, what consultation process took place, and whether those changes are permanent. Thank you. Oh, and the other point, the first long question. Um, and I just noticed on the, um, uh, the KPI2 patronage, um, it says that they're expecting the users of the um, now uh, cut uh, supported services to or go on to commercial services, but is it likely that we'll also just lose a certain amount of overall bus patching which is those services don't fill the gap and people find other ways of getting about or just stop them travelling as much? Shane, you best place because a lot of those issues are most related. They are. Um, I think in terms of the, the detail question, if I can pick up the details of the reasoning behind that outside of the meeting, and I can share them all through the chat for the meeting, because you've asked specific questions there. Uh, just let me get some details for you, and then I'll circulate around if that's okay. Okay. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, the on page 20, in 19 is 1E. Um, the question was about developing a property that called the Holy Palace, the local city region, uh, river crossing, uh, recognised the linkage between Mercy Gateway and the Tunnels. Um, then on the update, it then says that this, this has now been suspended. Um, and saying it's suspended, it would suggest that it was an ongoing talk, and now there isn't. I just wondered why. Jen, uh, John, who wants to take this one? Well, Gary, yeah. 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 Seeing how the officer involved in those talks, it's probably best to give you the detail. So, uh, 
historically, the, what was the ICA and uh, transferred into the CA had a memorandum of understanding with Holton Borough Council that we'd work together for uh, interoperability arrangements associated between Mersey Tunnels and the proposed Mersey Gateway Bridge, which is soon to open. Uh, those discussions were advanced. There's a set of principles in place which have been shared with this committee previously, which officers were working towards. And uh, earlier this year, uh, at the request of, whole, of the Mersey Gateway Crossing Board, those discussions were suspended pending the opening of the bridge, with the intention that once the bridge is opened, then those discussions continue onwards on that page. So, Again, from, from our perspective as an organisation, we're very open to holding those discussions with Alton, but they were requested uh, by the gateway crossings uh, to be suspended. John? Thanks, Chair. Thanks, I'd like to uh, follow up your comments as an extent, Chair, for May, about the presentation of this. I think it's excellent. I really do. It's been a real move in the right direction. Not only does it make it more easily accessible for councillors to actually ascertain the information, but also the members of the public, so I commend the direction as it goes. I've probably have slight reservations about the ball's eyes, but I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that. I'll reserve judgment on that when we get to quarters two, three, and four, perhaps. But just a quick question or two for me as well. On page 16, K KP1, uh, please, it's just this um, Perry's commuter affairs have shown the biggest increase. I just wondered why they have disproportionately risen above, say, their commercial and other forms of motor transport. I'll ask that on page 16, and I'll go to page 22 if I may, Chair. Um, it's probably fair if I take that. Obviously, that chart has got relative increases in, in absolute terms. The ferry commuter fare remains quite affordable compared to those other transport options. The, the large increase over the five year period is more a reflection of where it started rather than where it is now. Uh, it was very heavily subsidised five years ago. The ferry strategy and the financial strategy of reducing the ferry deficit has just predicated that those fares become more realistic. Uh, and, and that's the reason for the increase. Again, yeah, I stress it was, it's more a reflection of how, it, how, how much it was subsidised five years ago than now. Thanks, John. That was very clear. Thank you. My other point, Chair, is on page 22. It's 3B. Uh, maintain infrastructure needs and support the bus rail and uh, Red indication here, even though it's on the green overall, there's been limited progress against the delivery of bus capital program by asset management. I'm just wondering what the specific reasons are behind that. Please. Thank you very much. Chair? Yeah, yeah uh, the, the key part of the bus alliance on the, is the reliability and punctuality interventions. Um, those interventions take um, quite a lot of time to work through the various consultation processes to deliver them. And what it's saying is that, that there's a real timeline to achieving some of those interventions. We have amended some, you know, some of the uh, um, infrastructure with bus reviews going on. We have held back a little bit because if you're doing a bus review and then you were, it would affect perhaps where you might invest or you create an interchange that you have to pick up. So there are quite a few influences involved in that. But the, the delay is simply in the process of getting approval, getting an agreement, working with the Highway Authority, integrating into the program to keep the network going on the highway. As I touched on a little bit earlier in the meeting, there's an awful lot of disruption out there currently at the moment. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Natalie? Different mechanisms we have and resources in 
available in terms of the transport police, CCTV on the buses that ensure safety. Are we utilizing that enough in terms of picking up some of the um, commuters that might be vandalizing um, the buses or the train? Yeah, we obviously have our have a safe um, structure um, during the last part of, of last year we did a fundamental review uh, and part of that is ensuring that we're utilising the data uh, that's coming in not just from the staff police and British Transport Police but also from the bus operators um, and we're looking at a new tasking regime uh, as part of the activities uh, scheduled for this year where we're all other parties down in also because of the service activity. So that ensures that we're using all the intelligence, uh, including obviously um, CCTV, uh, and that the resources that we've got specifically around uh, on the railway which transport police uh, and through our um, police community support and the uh, police can actually be focused uh, in, in relation to that. We are also doing some work for how we support and encourage um, the transport workforce to report and to get that data in consistent format to help um, to ensure that
I would say it'd be, a, it'd be exceptional rather than all, which I think is what you're raising. Yeah. Okay, but I'll take that. We'll take that over there. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, just to um, obviously set in, in context, this is quarter one, which is in effect the end of June. We're already uh, in September, so they are only uh, any indicators, and I'd like the um, Director of Finance to to reiterate what a challenging year this is going to be in terms of the targets set by um, well, the budget reductions that we've had and all the issues that we're raising. And it's good to see so many greens. And I know uh, by purpose, some of the things we can't control uh, which shouldn't really be on the report. And I'm really glad members have focused their attention on some of the greens and, and the amber greens to actually dig a little bit deeper. And we're hoping that's what the new format will enable us to do, particularly the back section of the targets and, and what have you. Uh, I heard the comment to Bullseye, so it's a case of coming out of the block of what you could have won. Okay. <laughs> like, like you, Jim Bowen. <laughs> John, I want to reiterate the point. Yeah, I think obviously underlying all of the financial report is the fact that there still remains a significant budget gap between our underlying spending requirements in terms of travel and the funds we've got available. Our members will be aware that the transport levy reduced significantly. But on top of that, we don't have the access to the toll tolls in the way that used to be the case. And the special rail grant has reduced. Um, we've lost funding through ITB as well. So, you know, in every area, we, we, we're stretched. So, you know, it, it, it's to be commended from, from budget holders and service managers that they're maintaining this green and the green path, um, despite the reduction in resources. In addition to that, there was a huge amount of work being undertaken to reduce that budget gap for next year, and that's what you know, we're familiar with the sports and bus network changes and uh, you know the strategies to work through that program of efficiencies and savings and minimise the impact on on service users and hopefully maintain this positive performance. Um, but you know, as resources diminish, it obviously gets harder and harder to do that. I was only going to add as well, because I've already made the points about the good reports, at least to sort of read, but one of the things that I thought was great in terms of where we are with KPIs in regards to affordability, because that's always been something that's a real kind of key focus for all of us about making sure the public transport network should be the best value they can be for our residents, so we use it as the first um, choice rather than the last resort. And one of the things that was great to see from page 31 is actually how, um, in terms of affordability, uh, the affordability of buses has become actually better in the past couple of years than traditionally it has been. And I think we should always continue to sort of remember that that's because of the concerted pressure that all of us here at Mersey Travel uh, have continually put onto the bus companies, and particularly in the way that we're able to get Ariba as by far and away the largest and most significant bus company in the city region to cut a number of its fares. We often kind of make the point about the much better deal we've got for young people in the city region, the fares reductions we got for all of our under 19s. But we shouldn't also lose sight of the fact that we were able to get a significant 30p bus fare cut in St. Helens, a 20p cut in the Wirral, a number of freezes within uh, Liverpool. And a lot of that, whilst there's still more to do, don't get me wrong, there's still ways in which sort of bus fares need to be much better value. That was quite a big step in the right direction and something that's virtually unheard of in any other part of, of the country. So that was the kind of one of, um, of the key sort of KPIs that stood out for me as some really good progress. But let's make sure we see that line continuing in the same trajectory uh, for the next few quarters and years ahead as well. If there's no further questions or comments, um, if I can um, move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report, if that's agreed. Excellent. Uh, fifth item is the Walls Development Programme, and this is the update report that Gary's given us. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, once again, this is a follow on report from previous reports, bringing up to date the ongoing programme that supports development. Um, you've obviously read the report, and I'll just bring a few key points to your attention. Under Section 4 of the recent deliverables, you'll note that uh, we've now put in place the ability and processes to deactivate lost and stolen uh, concessionary smart cards. 
and uh, this is now in place and you can see the impact on the number of journeys made with the cards that should be practically hotlisted and that's in the graph just over the page. Uh, that was implemented around uh, June and July time you'll see there's a significant reduction uh, down to the road levels. Uh, section 5 talks about those deliverables that are planned uh, and underway. Uh, 5.1.1 uh, and 5.1.2 uh, talks about the two deliverables that are uh, in the pipeline for around, um, around the time of November. And that's a bundle of adult day solid tickets, uh, also known as a carne, so that's um, single day solid tickets uh, as sold as multiples, 1, 3 and 5. Uh, I should point out that um, although that is uh, on target, still plan to go ahead. There are some technical issues that have come to light with the ticket machines that are on the Eureka Stagecoach Coach buses. Um, two different technical issues. Um, but we're hoping that early next week we'll have them resolved and we'll still be on target to go ahead. Um, but please watch the space. Uh, the sold up weekly tickets, very similar to the way Eureka and Stagecoach weekly tickets are now sold on bus on the Lawrence card. We're going to move the solo weekly also available on bus on the Walrus Card as a smart ticket. Uh, and they're all bundled together as one, as one set release to the uh, public. Uh, at the same time, we're linking with 5.2, which is the implementation of the £1 activation fee for any new Walrus Card issued to the member of the public. Uh, and that is uh, planned, tested, and in place to go ahead at the same time. We're also, at the same time while this is going ahead, the team are working furiously on the Wallace portal. That is the ability to go onto the internet and purchase any of the smart tickets in advance and then collect them onto your smart card uh, on, the, on, the, on the network. Alongside um, all that work, we're also looking at potential future, future deliverables of how we might develop the Wallace program uh, going forward. And a lot of that is in partnership with TFN and you'll notice across section 6 there uh, we've been working in partnership with Mercy Rail and other um, major train operating companies and transport in the north to look at what we can do. We have some draft legal uh, agreements in place um, and we're just now finalising those uh, to put in place in the weeks. Uh, we're looking at the deliverables that we could potentially um, implement. They include uh, validators across all the stations, so then the ability to swipe your smart card and interact the same way at the front of the bus when you get on the bus ETM, bus ticket machine, you're able to swipe your card and either activate a ticket or, or validate your ticket. Um, and also look at making the Walrus portal uh, rail, um, rail compatible, um, which sounds like a simple thing to say, but I believe it is extremely complex. Uh, and we're also looking at how um, linking with what we're doing locally with the TFN wider agenda to make sure that we are aligned, we're, we're lever leveraging economies of scale, we're all moving in the same direction um, so that um, what we're doing locally aligns with what's going on across the region. So a uh, very quick update this time around, Chair, and uh, I'll, I'll take any questions. So any questions or comments at all? It's <laughs> 